Yeah, a few weeks ago we were talking about how the uh, Republicans hadn't even mentioned terrorism in the, in the debates until the Paris attacks happened. Yesterday you had several candidates, Rick Santorum, Chris Christie, all of a sudden declare that we're already in, in World War III. That was a pretty damn quick turnaround. Peter, are we already in a world war against, I guess, based on last night, the Muslim world? Only in our own minds and only to the extent that it helps the uh, candidates keep uh, fear alive. Um, I want to back up one quick second to the idea that there were so many people um, calling Donald Trump's plan to ban Muslims, uh, disagreeing with that. And, and they did. I think what left me, again, concerned was that no one really said this is insane. We, barring people based on, on their religion is, is like about as un-American as we could possibly get. And are we not completely insane and slaves to our, our irrational fears? I mean, no, they said, well, if you ban all the Muslims, that's going to radicalize more people or this or that. Um, there wasn't this sense of outrage by anyone, including the, the To be the fair, host. Lindsey Graham did, did, was a bit outraged, but he was, he's an outraged about everything. Maybe, I, I didn't. Well, yeah, now, I, and that, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Igor, and, and I just I think that deserves a moment, because up until Paris, Lindsey Graham was the only motherfucker saying we need to go to war with Islam, and I'm not saying that he was right, or not with Islam, but with, with terrorists. Um, and, and I think that's weird that the guy who was the biggest hawk six weeks ago, two months ago, was the one who most passionately defended the idea of, you know, it not being about Islam in a bigger picture. He apologized to the Muslim world for Donald Trump. I hope to God they didn't hear anything else he or anyone else said after that, but still, I thought and that was an impressive too. moment. And Lindsey Graham, only veteran in the race. Fair enough. But back to um, back to World War III, and of course not. Um, this is part of, of the problem, is how these things get overblown in, in what passes for political discourse here in the United States. Um, during the uh, summer, there was a... Uh, Hold on about what Americans were most afraid of. And I think terrorism was down around number three uh, on the list. Uh, climate change, uh, gun shootings, the usual mass shooting stuff, whatever. Um, and of course, now overwhelmingly, the polls show that what Americans are afraid of, uh, of terrorism. We saw that played out in its absurd form uh, just the other day when the Los Angeles City School System sent 900,000 kids home based on a silly bomb threat hoax. We're, we're fearful, and this fear causes us to exaggerate the threats into World War III. Um, you know, the idea, we've all talked about this over and over. I mean, statistically, the chances of being hurt, killed by a terrorist are the same as being killed by lightning, on and on and on and on and on. It is, it is a problem, and it is not something to just kind of laugh off. It, but it is not World War III, and it should not be the dominant emotion that governs a country that insists in its national song that we're the home of the brave. We're not acting that way. We should. Well, Eric, you know, we have, you know, we have the U.S. and well, most of Europe already involved in Iraq and, and now Syria. You have dozens of uh, Arabic and Muslim countries that are now forming a coalition of some sort. And in any case, they're involved in an armed conflict. Why isn't this a world war? Because typically, I guess the definition of world oh, war... we lost Peter. Because Peter... Traditionally, the definition of world war is a war that literally is engulfing the whole world, and that would be two fronts. So when we think of World War II, it was mainly all of Europe, Asia, you know, the ocean. This one is more or less mitigated to the Middle East. All there are terrorist attacks taking place in Paris, other locations. There's not a constant battle going somewhere else. Everything is contained. Josh, you know, <laughs> Josh, it is all of Europe involved, basically. It is all of the Middle East involved, more or less. Isn't Doesn't that meet Eric's criteria for a world war? World war? There has to be fighting on two fronts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, here's the thing. It's not a war just because it's it's not it's not a world war like we think of world wars. You know, of the the two uh, ones the, the, from history. Because one, there's no sort of state recog like legitimate state uh, that we would be fighting against. There's Islamic state, 
but that is a you know it's a death cult. It's it's like saying that you know the Branch Davidians were a major religious group um, worthy of you know of their conflict that they had with the government. Um, I don't think that, and I and I think that because of of the the very goal is to in, to start a world war. That if we go about giving them that, it's I mean, it's only making things worse. It, and, and I don't know what the solution is. Like, I don't know what I would would have liked to have heard a Republican or Democrat say about how we can't go to war with them because it's what they want. And so this is what we're going to do. And that's why I feel like it's tragic that it was just chest thumping and saying that Obama and Hillary can't keep us safe because we really need a legitimate opposition party, someone that has a different idea than what's being done by the administration. And that's not what we're getting. We're going to get, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be fucking harder about it. And we're going to be, you know, we're going to call it Islamic terrorism. Let me, uh, and it's just in your point though, you were talking about how the Republicans constantly say that they, they fail to keep us safe. I was reading an article the other day about the military campaigns in Iraq. And I believe they've been, ISIS has been rolled back almost 50% through the combined forces of different coalition fighting groups and bombing. So, I mean, they are pushing them back. They've lost a good portion of Iraq over the last year. 